This time around, we ride a 350cc street naked motorcycle that promises a lot and looks extremely good. Hello and welcome to Pit Stop. The bike that we are starting this episode with is the Zontis 350R. The first thing that we have to address about the Zontis 350R is the styling. Now, I don't know about you, but I actually like it a lot. The front end is dominated by a very funky looking headlamp cluster and the illumination is kind of okay, somewhere in the middle of the road sorts. And then it all just starts to blend in. The sharp side panels, then you have a nice, chunky, very sharply designed tank as well. It all merges very nicely into the seat section. It tapers very nicely off into the rear section, which is highlighted by the fantastic exhaust pipes over here. Even the fit and finish on this bike is actually not all that bad. I thought, of course, you know, being Chinese, you already have a preconceived notion going in your mind, but it's not bad at all, genuinely speaking. A couple of things, of course, which are flimsy. This thing, the fuel filler cap, that kind of uh, looks like it's a little cheap on quality. But otherwise, generally, all the controls, the weldings as well, they all feel like it's a job well done. Now, the big thing with the Zontis is that the manufacturer has given all the kind of features that you can imagine in the 350R and all the other motorcycles as well. What I particularly like about uh, what we get in terms of features is the lighting for the switch gear. Now, this is backlit, of course, and you can turn it off as well. A couple of things which are definitely the highlight and are not really seen in even a couple of segments above this are button opening fuel cap and seat. So what you do is uh, you, of course, one, get a keyless function with this bike. So you only have to place the key with you and then it operates everything by itself. You turn this power switch on and then you press a fuel button and this thing opens up. Same is the case with the seat. There's a button which has seat written on it just below the fuel one and that opens the seat as well. So very convenient and uh, in terms of features, these are things that really set it apart from the competition. For the screen, you have four different layouts that you can choose from. They're called uh, casual, race, street and simple. So whatever graphic you fancy, you can choose. And then whenever you're satisfied with whatever menu you want, go into the sub menus and then you can do a whole lot more, right from changing the intensity of the panel itself to doing the clock settings. It also gives you the option of Bluetooth so you can sync your phone and it gets you TPMS or tire pressure monitoring system. So there is a lot going on in here and this thing is pretty feature loaded that way. Now that big list of features is all great, but in this category, the ride experience matters a lot more. And going by what this thing offers on paper, I thought this is going to be a phenomenal experience, but not really. I'm a bit underwhelmed by what it offers in the way that it rides. And uh, that's primarily to do with a couple of things. One, the brakes, and the second is the suspension. It's got a 43mm dia, upside down fork at the front, and a monoshock at the rear, and the setup is just about okay. But one big thing is the braking, and this is where it falls by the wayside. It's got a dual disc setup for sure. It's got a 320mm up front and a 265 at the rear, but it just does not give you the confidence despite it having dual channel ABS. You have to really press hard on the anchors and uh, even then it just feels soft and mushy and it does not really feel like uh, it's giving you the bite that is needed for the kind of performance of the speeds that you're doing. Now these tyres and you would probably have never heard of them. They are CST and expectedly Chinese but the grip levels on this is actually not bad. You can tip the bike into a corner and uh, be reasonably confident that it's not going to wash out. And the rear actually grips fairly okay. The front can still be a little vague, but the rear grips pretty fine. But that's when you feel that if the whole chassis balance would have been slightly better, this thing would have handled even more pleasantly. Now, this thing has a single cylinder 348cc engine. It's a dual overhead camshaft, makes about 39 horsepower and 34 Newton meter, and both of them come fairly high up in the RPM range. Now, the power and torque coming in at very high RPM levels would not have been a problem had this engine liked to rev. 
it would have uh, been really nice in fact because it can make some decent noises especially in the mid range and that's exactly where the mid range is where this thing actually starts to impress you a little bit but the moment you cross about 6000 rpm this thing just starts to falter in a very very bad way the vibrations can be felt through the pegs and through the handlebars thankfully the seat remains vibe free so you don't really have a buzzy bottom be sedate be about 610 on this bike and you're going to be absolutely fine and it pulls very nicely from around 3000 to about 6000 rpm but the power delivery per se is not bad and uh, frankly i just got extremely frustrated with the vibrations that's why i did not pull it to the red line but if you do i don't think that the power is going to be lacking in any way it is definitely going to give you the experience that the numbers suggest and those numbers are par for the course but ideally just keep it in the mid range and that's where this thing is going to be happiest It's got a constant mesh six-speed gearbox, and that works fairly decently. I've never really faced any problem with the gears, and never had any false neutral as well. So I would say probably the gearbox is one of the nicer things about this motorcycle, and uh, you can shift without the clutch as well. In fact, you can even go down the gears without the clutch if you rev match very nicely. So yeah, I guess the gearbox is pretty on point. Now, one very crucial thing that you need to remember with this bike is when you are riding it. be gentle and gradual on the throttle especially when you're leaning in settle the compression down on the suspension and then just have a constant play on the throttle don't be abrupt don't be on and off because that's how the rear gets unsettled and it's going to give you a very nervous experience but that's really a shame because when you look at it you think that it's going to handle like it's on rails and the engine is going to reward you with all the goodness of part delivery and it is going to be a very very responsive thing and on both those fronts this thing kind of disappoints because this is not a very sharp handler i'm not saying that it does not tackle bends in a confident way but it's not playful like a ktm is now that was all about how it is not at the dynamic edge of riding experience but this thing is a more comfortable experience yes uh, there are definitely some compromises that you make with the suspension being too soft because show it a slightly big bump or an undulation and this thing definitely feels very nervous going over it the seats are fairly okay nicely padded nicely cushioned the design is also pretty decent and you get this step over here and this thing supports your lower back in a fairly strong way the pillion is going to be put on a torture throne if you ever plan to carry a pillion with you because the back seat is just not ideal for anyone at all Overall I really like the way the Zontes 350R has been designed. It's got a nice aggressive styling to it and the footprint is not too huge. So it's not too big, not too small. Hides a single cylinder 350cc engine in a very nice way, tightly packaged as well and the whole mass is concentrated somewhere towards the center forward. It's not very out there, so the balance can be pretty okay as well. But when you start to ride it, it feels that there is something lacking. Yes it's got all the features but it needs to connect with you and that's what it does not do. So for me there is still a little bit of a development road that Zontes needs to cover. <laughs>